call to order, then we'll, they'll have to, to read it into the record as well. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, today is June 26, 2015. Uh, it's the, it's 9-01. We'll call the meeting to the order of the Appraisal Review Board. Uh, the uh, meeting, June 30th, I'm sorry. We'll make a correction on this. Yeah, that was the letter we initially sent out before they asked okay. for the reschedule. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, June 30th, 2015. Uh, the notice has been posted in accordance with Open Meetings Act, Section 551 of the Government Code. Uh, we only have one hearing this morning. The hearing is uh, protest number 3207. It's property ID T0000119188. Uh, it's the generating plant, uh, and for the record, we'll let me know uh, members present, uh, Gary Whittle, uh, Larry Fleming, and Rick Villa. And at this time, uh, if you'd like to read the affidavit, and it is my affidavit, if you'd like to read it into the records, and we'll review it in the that. Okay. <clears throat> the uh, property owner's affidavit of evidence to the appraisal review board is standard form 50-283. <clears throat> it was filled out by Luminet Generation Company. <clears throat> it uh, actions being protested or values over market value, values unequally compared to other properties, and the exemption denied, modified, or canceled. Uh, it says please list evidence, and basically their evidence was their attached rendition. Um, and then under their statement, it says the appraisal district's valuation of the subject property is not accurate. There are several factors contributing to the inaccuracy, including but not limited to because the evaluation utilizes inappropriate methodology, because the evaluation weighs certain methodologies too heavily, because the evaluation methodologies are based on erroneous assumptions, and because the appraisal may include the calculation of the value of the subject property, the values of the properties, <clears throat> including certain assets, intangible assets, they're not properly included in the value of the subject property. The appraisal district is also inappropriately denied, modified, canceled, and exemption that applies to the property. Nuclear fuel inventory has declined from the prior year. The appraisal district has not taken into the account the reduction of the indicated um, of the 2015 rendition value. Um, each one of these reads slightly different, but they they all are indicating that um, the values on the very last page <coughs> of your affidavit. These are the values that they believe are correct. Uh, for the transportation equipment, it's a value of 63800 For the uh, Comanche Peak SES, uh, it's a value of $1,450,000,000 uh, even. Um, materials and supplies is a value of $33,353,200. Nuclear fuel is a value of $96,720,000. And then sirens at 6500 And uh, there's five accounts that they show to make up the value of the power plant. Uh, one of the things I'd like to point out, based on their notice of protests that were sent in to the appraisal district, um, and I have copies of those that I can get to you. Um, Um, they create a total value uh, that they're asking for on all of the accounts, which we do consider these all to be part of the same structure. And the total value that they're asking for is $1,580,710,500. And um, there's no other evidence supporting 
that they've given other than their statements. Um, they did not supply us with any of their calculations on how they arrived at the value. And I'm just looking through here. They don't have any evidence supporting why they believe it's unequally compared to other properties. And they don't have any evidence supporting if there's been an exemption, denied, modified, or canceled. And they've checked other, but there's no evidence supporting anything other than the things I mentioned to you at this time. Uh, that's the completion of their affidavit. Um, at this time, I'd just like to show that the appraisal district currently has the appraisal of the entire plant, uh, the, the 1 billion 580 that they showed. Uh, our representation of that is 2 billion 400 million. Um, I've got calculations here that demonstrate how we got to our. Um, Appraised value. If you guys would like to look these over, this is a copy of our income approach that we use when arriving at the value of the plant. Um, it's a standard methodology that we've been using uh, since the existence, uh, best I can tell, of the plant. It's a direct capitalization method. It essentially uh, has a uh, goes through and breaks down what the value of the plant is based on the income that the plant produces. Um, we also did consider the cost approach when doing this. The cost approach method obviously is going to produce an extremely high value and because their, you know, their initial cost was, was very heavily weighted. Um, they were reported to us that the initial cost was slightly over $12 billion. So, um, just using straight line depreciation at 22 years, you would essentially end up with a, a value of around five and a half billion dollars. And we can concede that the value of the plant today is probably not five and a half billion dollars. Um, we think there should be consideration given to it, which they did not do in, in any of the information that they have provided to us. But uh, we, we'll, like I said, we do concede that it's probably not five and a half billion dollars today. Um, if you go through the calculation worksheet that we gave you, you come to the back, <coughs> the back page of what I, I handed you, shows that they ended with an NOI, uh, which is net operating income of roughly 336 million, uh, 910, uh, We used to cap rate at 14.21. Uh, that gave us a, a gross uh, value for the plant there of 2 billion, and then we did a correlated value, and then when we take into consideration the uh, cost approach to the plant, we came up with a correlated value of two billion four fifty eight seventy seven four zero seven. Um, at this time, you know that's obviously the, what the appraisal district feels is correct, and we've had informal conversations with the plant, but it has not produced any. Uh, they have not produced any methodology as to how they arrived at any of the numbers that they rendered. Uh, so, seeing as how they provided no evidence, we believe the appraisal district would like to maintain our value. Uh, I apologize, but before we go any further, we do, each of us have an affidavit that protests the hearing that we need to sign where uh, none of us had any communication to any other person that had owned us. So if we would, we've got that front, so we'll go ahead and sign that. Okay, so. okay also, uh, I understand, what I understand is, is the value that the district has placed on it is the $2,450,000. Two billion four hundred fifty million eight hundred seventy-seven thousand four hundred seven. Is that correct? Yes, essentially with all the accounts combined. Okay. Is that's what was sent out on their notice? Yes, sir. And their number that uh, they think the evaluation should be is one billion five eighty five hundred eighty thousand five hundred eighty thousand seven hundred. One one billion five hundred eighty million seven seven hundred ten thousand five hundred dollars. That's correct. Question: What 
in their uh, affidavit, he's saying uh, denied, modified, or canceled an exemption that applies to the property. What's that about? I'm not sure. I, again, they didn't provide any evidence asking. There's, there's a few TECQ exemptions that the, the property does qualify for, but we haven't denied, modified, or canceled any of those exemptions since so they've been in existence. Those are handled directly by TECQ, and then they, they essentially give us a number that's going to be reduced. Uh, and it's only on emissions equipment that they have out there. But we sent out no letters denying or modifying or canceling any of their exemptions. What is the depreciation rate that, that you put on the percentage? Through the cost approach? Yeah. Uh, it would be 44% depreciated at this point. 50-year uh, life, 22 years old would, would equate to 44 percent depreciated if you use it based on the cost of growth. One more, this uh, Shannon Carter, is he an employee or is he an agent? It's a she, yeah, it's a she and she is an employee of uh, THU, but she's just a representative that filled out the paperwork for THU. Mm -hmm. And I take it the reason you want to do a comparable approach is just want to do. Yeah, there's no, no comparable sales since 2009, I think, was the last one that we found that had any kind of a sale associated with a nuclear power plant. And that's through the United States. That's not in Texas, obviously. There's only two here. So, yeah.